So now in this video, we're going to make a 555 timer circuit here that gives us a one-third to two-third of the power supply voltage sawtooth waveform there. Now we're also going to improve it where we get closer to ground right there, up to a two-third of the supply voltage. We'll talk about that coming up. So some of you may recognize this. The last video I made had uh, pretty close to the same circuit, except for... I didn't have this down there, I didn't have the diode. Also, the mistake I made was I had pin 5 going to the positive supply instead of pin 4. Pin 4 is the reset pin, that's the one that goes to the positive supply. So that was a big enough mistake that I figured I would remake the video. So now when it comes to the timing of the 555 timer, it depends on a capacitor, how charged it is and discharged it is. If you don't alter the internal voltage divider, it's looking for uh, one third of the supply voltage to two thirds of the supply voltage and uh, it responds accordingly to keep charging and discharging the capacitor between those two points. To get our sawtooth we need a steady current while it is charging. So these pins will not let any current through it. Uh, whatever we attach to the output here cannot take any current either. What's going to provide the current is this LM334 current source component. So it's just three uh, terminals here and you use a resistor to set the current. You take this voltage, uh, 64 millivolts, and you divide it by the resistance. That's gonna give you the current, which is gonna be about uh, 10 microamps right there. And 10 microamps charging a 10 microfarad capacitor gets you about one volt per second steadily. So now when you got pin two and pin six tied together, that's the trigger pin, the threshold pin, then they're looking at how charged the capacitor is. One's waiting, pin to the trigger pin for when the capacitor is one third of the supply voltage and the other pin, pin six, the threshold pin is waiting for when the capacitor is two thirds of the supply voltage, if you don't uh, shift them. And I will come to that uh, later. But in any case, the capacitor will charge up to two thirds of the supply voltage over time, since this is a steady current. None of these pins are letting current through them at the moment. Once it hits two thirds of the supply voltage, the threshold pin, tells the output to go low, that's three, we don't use the output for the signal there, and it tells pin seven to go low to connect to ground. And uh, so that will discharge the capacitor, that will make a direct connection and any current that comes through will also go to ground. So that doesn't affect how fast the capacitor discharges at all. In this case, sometimes you got a resistor between uh, uh, pin six and pin seven, but we don't in this video. So in any case, the capacitor will uh, instantly discharge down to one-third supply voltage and then pin 2 will notice that one-third supply voltage and tell it to stop discharging right there and then the capacitor can start charging again. So that brings us to the diode which in this circuit is optional without it you got this waveform with it you got that waveform so here we have the output when the capacitor is discharging because it hit two-thirds supply voltage, the output also goes low. That's pin three. So that'll be a uh, low voltage. We're gonna feed that back to pin five. So now pin five connects to the internal voltage divider that uh, makes up the one-third, two-third supply voltage. And as you can see here, it pulls down the voltage for the that the uh, trigger pin is looking for. It brings it close to ground, not all the way. It's probably a diode drop uh, difference. So a diode higher about 0.6 volts probably because you got that diode there but in any case the output goes low that pulls it low when the output's high then the diode is uh, facing the other way and uh, it's, this side's got to be more negative that side more positive for current to flow through and a voltage to build up when uh, this side's more positive that side's more negative the diode will make it so that uh, pin 5 here the control pin doesn't even see the uh, voltage over there so that makes sense why it would go back up to two-thirds supply voltage and so here we are on the board. So I was going to take this circuit and amplify it, but that'll have to be next video because as I said before, to amplify it, we're going to use the LM358. Came out of the same kit there. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about that next video. This video, we got the NE555 there. As I said before, discharge threshold and trigger are tied together. You'll see a couple jumpers that give them a direct connection. We have to power the integrated circuit right there, positive, negative. We're going to put five volts across it, reset has to go to the positive supply to tell it not to do anything. If it gets a low uh, input, then it resets the 555 timer, which we don't want to do at all in the circuit. Output and control are floating until we add the diode. 
as we mentioned before. So you can see the pin layout there. This is a 10 microfarad capacitor. We're not going to look at the value, but uh, that's the negative side. There's a gray dash, and uh, so that's got to be charged more negative, or else you could destroy the uh, component. And some of them, if you destroy them bad enough, they explode. So you don't want to do that. But in any case, we're good to go now. It's in the right direction. So at that node where those three pins connect together and the capacitor right there, they all connect. We also got the V minus pin of the LM334. So it looks like a transistor because it's in the TO92 package that most transistors you get from kits come into. So it looks just like a transistor, but operates uh, very differently. So we got the positive side right there, V plus, the uh, top pin. The resistor is going to the middle pin, that's the R pin, and going to V minus. So this keeps that 64 millivolts across the resistor. And then that sets the current. It's a 6,800 ohm resistor. So that we get approximately 10 uh, micro amps right there. And as I said before, with a 10 microfarad capacitor, we should see approximately one volt uh, rise per second as it's charging. And finally, we have the oscilloscope there. The power supply now I attached to the uh, rails. The alligator clips come from the oscilloscope there. We've got uh, this one, the black alligator clip with the blue jumper to the negative side of the power supply. The red jumper we're going to put to the capacitor because that's the voltage we're going to look at. Now I'll hit the uh, power button and you can see we got a steady voltage rise right there. So that started at uh, zero volts because that was the starting point. The capacitor was completely discharged until we started. So there you can see the waveform that we explained before pretty nicely. Now we're going to take the diode, so cathode, the gray band, to the output, and the anode to the uh, pin five, the control pin. And now you can see we have the other waveform that I mentioned. So not quite hitting zero volts, but uh, really close there. And I bumped stuff that threw off the uh, voltage. But in any case, there you can see that. So now I shifted this LED. This is what we'll look at in the next video. But we got the LED because the LED is gonna stay on right there. But now I'm gonna take this jumper and put it to the non-inverting input of this op amp right there. And then put it to the uh, voltage, the uh, capacitor right there. Same row as the capacitor. And now you can see uh, once I get a connection, it's kind of a crowded crowded area here. There you go. That should work. Now you can see that uh, with the waveform, since we're amplifying it, we cannot power the LED directly, but the op amp is taking that voltage, transferring it to the LED in its pr uh, protective resistor. The op amp from the power supply is providing all the current. All we have to do is give it the signal voltage, and uh, so it's not being thrown off right there. So in any case, that's next video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, that, donate, Patreon if you can. That helps out the most, but just watching videos helps out a ton. Thanks to everybody that does that. I will see you in the next video.